demons know their fate. Have you come to destroy us? Like, they know they're going to hell. Question, how many demons are going to hell? What percentage? 100% all of them. How come we're not all going to hell? See, these divine beings did the same thing as us human beings, sinned against a holy and righteous God. Jesus comes as one of us, lives and dies and rises for us so that we can be saved by him. Jesus did not live, die and rise for demons. Zero demons get saved. Some people will accuse God rather than thank God and ask things like, how could a loving God send people to hell? My question is always, how could a holy God take anyone to heaven? We should get the same deal as the demons. Everyone who sins goes to hell. Or you get Jesus and you get to go to heaven, but only if you're a human being, not if you're a demonic being. The demons also know who God, who Jesus is. They say, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Here's the point. Sometimes the most demonic people know exactly who Jesus is. They just don't love him, they don't repent to him, and they don't live under his authority. This is why sometimes religious people are the most dangerous people. You're like, well, they know all about God. Do they repent of their sin? Do they love him? Do they live under his authority? See, there's, there's one thing about knowing about God and knowing God. And the demons, they know who God is. They know who Jesus is. Throughout the New Testament, as you read it, oftentimes the disciples are a little confused who Jesus is. Jesus is like, who do you think I am? They're like, I don't know, prophet, uh, you know, Elijah, I don't know, you know, holy man. The demons are like, the Holy One of God. Like, the demons actually keep nailing the test. They know exactly who Jesus is. They just hate him. And this demon manifests in a church. This is where sometimes people are like, we shouldn't talk about demons. We're God's people. We go to church. It's like demons go to church. And people bring demons to church with them. And I'm not saying everyone. Some of you are like, not everyone. Most people are just foolish, <laughs> right? There's like, like, there's a few people, they're wise. There's a few people, they're demonic. And most people, just foolish, <laughs> just foolish. So if you're walking around, you're going, or is everyone demonic? No, <laughs> they're not. Some people, Satan's like, I would trip them, but I don't need to. They're tripping over their own feet. I don't even need to get involved with those people. Do these things still happen? They do. I'll give you a story. I've been, been a pastor for a long time, but I was a, I was a senior pastor. It was, almost, it was around 30 years ago. I was just teaching the Bible, you know, dozens of punk rock kids late at night on a Sunday, no big deal, small little church plant. You know, I, I'm brand new Christian. We were meeting in this old, I think it was Presbyterian church, had the pews in the center aisle. And the door opens up in the back and a college kid comes in, college age kid with a mountain bike and uh, parks it and then opens the double doors and there's a center aisle and then looks at me with the crazy eyes. He starts manifesting. And I'm like, oh. Picks up the mountain bike, starts screaming, I hate your God, I hate your God, I hate your God, running at me full speed, gonna gonna smash me with a mountain bike while I'm in the pulpit preaching. I'm like mid twenties, like, okay. I, here's what I know. I don't know what to do. That's what I know for sure. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just trying to teach a Bible study here. And I got like demon possessed mountain bike warrior coming at me full steam ahead. And because we're this, you know, sort of goth, punk rock, uh, early 90s grunge church, everybody's like, cool. And so um, <laughs> I'm like, this is not okay. <laughs> so I stepped forward and I just looked at him and I said, the Lord rebuke you in Jesus' name. And he stopped and he stopped screaming. I said, the Lord silence the spirit speaking through the man in Jesus' name. I said, by the power and authority of the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to release this man in the name of Jesus Christ. 
He dropped the mountain bike. He looked at me. He was no longer manifesting, turned and ran right down the center aisle, through the doors, down the neighborhood and left the bike. Okay, so I am there with a deliverance and a bike <laughs> in the pulpit, all right? And everybody's, all the college kids are looking at me like, what just happened? I was like, I, I do not like, do you need a bike? You know, I don't know what to do now. I don't know what to do, okay? <laughs> so a few of the leaders chase this guy off into the neighborhood. He's blocks away. And they ask him, what happened? He's like, I have no idea. He's like, my friend invited me to church. I was running a little late. I just was walking in and I was gonna go sit with my friend. He's like, next thing I know, I'm up front holding a bike and Pastor Mark saying something and I felt embarrassed, so I ran away. We prayed over him, got that oppression off him. You know, talked to him about Jesus, said, sir, you need to get saved. Like there's something really dark and demonic and diabolical that is, that is going with you. And the Lord Jesus wants to deliver you, right? He said he came to set the captives free and this is bondage. These things still happen and they happen in church. Thanks for joining me. My name is Pastor Mark. I've been teaching the Bible for more than three decades and head on constant collisions with woke culture. And I would love to get you more Bible teaching. Two things you can do. Go ahead and watch the sermon in total and also subscribe to the channel. And I'll just keep sending you Bible teaching and we'll have a lot more fun together.